In response to COVID-19, PSP is offering telefitness to Canadian Armed Forces members. By using social media platforms, the telefitness classes tailored to Canadian Armed Forces personnel become accessible to all. Prior to participating in this session, and to make an informed decision on whether you should seek advice from a qualified exercise professional or healthcare provider, consult the Get Active questionnaire of the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiology and its reference document by clicking on the links below. By continuing with this telefitness class, you understand that there is a possibility of physical injury and you agree that you do so voluntarily at your own risk. You also assume all risk of injury and agree to release the Canadian Forces Morale and Welfare Services from any and all claims related to your participation in this telefitness class. Hi, my name is Nicole Miller and I'm the fitness coordinator from Garrison Padawawa. Thanks for joining for today's Power Hour workout. For today's workout, we're going to be using post-activation potentiation, which combines strength exercises with plyometric exercises that are biomechanically similar in order to transfer strength into explosiveness. To do today's workout, you're going to require a couple of different things. So you'll need something that gives you some extra weight so that we can do a heavy strength exercise. So for myself, I'm going to be using a kettlebell. If you don't have a kettlebell, then you can use a book bag that's filled with um, books or something else that will give it some weight. I suggest maybe having a small backpack that you can hold onto to do some kettlebell swings. So that'll come up later in the workout. You can use a gym bag that has weight in it. You can use a cooler that has weight in it. There's lots of different options and you should see those options in the poster for this workout. We'll also need to have a band. So when we're doing our workout, as I said, we'll do a strength workout, a plyometric workout, and then we'll have two minutes rest between our sets for our workouts. During our rest, we're actually going to start warming up and getting some muscle activation for the upcoming exercises in the next set. So if you're ready, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with a warm up. So I'm just going to start by moving this stuff out of the way. And we're going to start with just knee hugs. So on the spot, fingers can be interlaced, raising the knee up and hugging it into the chest. And we're just going to alternate legs while we're doing that. When you're doing your knee hug, you're going to try to stay up nice and tall. So you want to make sure that you're not pulling the knee and moving back. So standing nice and tall, core is activated and strong. So you have a nice braced core. There were a few different videos that went over how to brace your core. So I'm not going to review that today. We'll do one more knee hug each leg. So the next thing that we're going to do standing on the spot is just arm circles. And when we're doing our arm circles, we're going to start by reaching our right arm out and forward. Elbow stays nice and straight. Reach the arm up to the ceiling. Rotate back. Reach back as far as you can. And then come down with the palm facing the thigh. So we're going to do that five times in one direction. And when you do this, you're really thinking about the range of motion of the shoulder and trying to get full rotation in control. We'll do two more, keeping the core nice and braced throughout. And we want to try and keep our chest forward. So we don't want our chest moving with our arm. And then we're going to reverse the direction. So start by coming up the back, reach up as high as you can, and then coming back down the front and the palm will brush by the thigh. And again, for this, it's nice, slow movements, trying to keep my wrists straight as I reach in all different directions. Shoulders have a lot of movements and we want to warm up through that full range of motion. Switching to the other hand, starting with those circles back, keeping the elbows straight, reaching it as high as you can. Keep that core brace nice and tight throughout as well. And we'll do two more circles in this direction before we Switch to the other direction. Last circle this way. And then switching directions. So starting by reaching back, reaching up overhead, 
forward and bringing it back down to the ground. Again, being careful that we try to keep our chest forward as much as possible. And we'll do one more rotation on this side. Good. Next movement that we're going to do is also for the shoulders and for the upper back. We're gonna start with our arms out in front, thumbs up to ceiling. Keeping the core brace, we're gonna reach the arms back into an eye. We'll reset in the middle. Arms will come out to a Y with thumbs still back. Elbows stay nice and straight again. Then arms come out to T, bringing it together. We'll pull the shoulder blades down the back as we draw the elbows down towards the floor for a W. And then we'll reach behind, grasping onto the hand and really draw the elbows back, opening up through the front shoulder and chest for an O. Then we'll go through that again. Eye reaches overhead. Y, T, W, and O. Two more times with that one. I really squeeze the shoulder blades together as you reach back. Y, T, W, draw the elbows down, and O, open those shoulders up. One more time here, I, Y, T, W, and O. Good, so the next movement that we're going to start is a hip circle. So same thing that we kind of did with our shoulders when we were going through rotation, except this time, we're gonna try and get some nice full range of motion with the hip. So we're gonna start by taking our balance to one leg, raising the knee up in front, core stays brace, and we're trying to really stabilize the upper body here. Then we're gonna open that knee up to the outside. From here, we're gonna to try to rotate the knee down and then draw it in back to midline. Coming up, open, knee draws down and back to midline. So other leg is going to be doing some stabilizing here. Core is staying nice and braced. If you need to put your foot down for a tap in between, you can but this is definitely going to be a little bit of a balance challenge. So we'll do one more, and then we're going to switch to the other leg. Good, maybe give that leg a little bit of a shakeout, taking it to the other side with those hip circles. So we're gonna start by knee coming up, open the knee to the outside, rotating down, and then draw the knee back to the midline. As we do this, we're trying not to get upper body movement. We're trying to hold nice and steady as much as we can. So sometimes in order to get that range of motion, we'll kind of lean away from it. But the thing is, we just wanna get that range within the hip itself. Good, we'll do two more on this side. And last one. So try and hold as steady as you can, just trying to get range at the hip. And you might find that there's a difference from one leg to the other. And that happens with most of us where one leg might have more range of motion or one leg might even feel a little bit stronger than the other. We're gonna go back to that first leg and we're going to start this time by pushing to the back. So we're going to bend the knee and we're gonna press through the heel. So when we're pressing through the heel, we're initiating a squeeze with the glute. Then we're gonna open that leg to the outside, pull the knee up into the center, and then down and press it through again. So when you're doing that press to the back, you're gonna make sure that you don't have any movement through the lumbar spine or the thoracic spine. So core is braced, press, open up, try and hold as steady as you can. We have two more on this side, again, if you need to put your foot down in between, please go ahead and do so. Last time this side, trying to hold it as steady as you can. Good, maybe a little shake out before we take it to the other leg again. So starting by pressing back other leg, press, open the knee up to the outside, bring it around and forward, back down and through. Again, five times here, 
holding nice and steady, maybe even squeezing the glute on the other leg, maybe a little bit of a tuck of the tailbone, holding it in, core nice and braced, and shoulders will be down and back. So we have one more rotation on this leg and let's try and get a nice full range of motion, maintaining hips, shoulders forward. Good, go ahead and place that down. From here, we're going to take it to a forward hinge. So for your forward hinge, we're gonna hinge from the hip. So you'll press the hips back, keeping a neutral spine. So spine stays in line, head stays in line with the spine. Feet are gonna be about shoulder width apart. Hinge forward from the hip, and then we're gonna reach for the floor. Walk yourself out to a plank position. From here, we're going to press back to down dog. So we're pressing through the hands. Hips are going up to the ceiling. You might have a slight bend in the knee and that's okay, but we really wanna look at that mobility in the shoulders and drawing shoulder blades together. Arms are gonna stay straight. Raising the right leg up to the ceiling, trying to press the left heel down towards the floor. And then we'll bring the knee into the chest and step it through the hands. From here, we're gonna raise the right hand up to the ceiling for a T-spine rotation. So trying to get some movement, opening the chest, but as well getting movement through the thoracic spine of the back. Hand will come down to a plant, and then you're gonna press back to down dog again. Again, drawing the shoulder blades up the back. Head stays in line and trying to keep neutral spine. Raising the left leg up to the ceiling, and then you'll draw it into the knee to the chest, step it through the hand. Left hand raises up to ceiling, opening up for a thoracic twist here. Bring the hand down to the floor, step back plank, core should be nice and tight, press back to down dog. Right leg lifts, left heel comes to floor, and try not to open at the hips here. We're gonna try and square the hips to the floor on this. Step that right foot through the hands, T-spine rotation here, bring it down to the floor, step back plank, press to down dog. Inhale as your left leg raises up and right heel presses to the floor. Again, try to square the hips. There's a tendency to open up here. Draw the knee to the chest, step it through the hands. Left hand reaches up to the ceiling for a T-spine rotation on this side. Then we're gonna bring that down, step the foot back to plank, press to down dog. And then from here, we're just gonna walk the hands back to the feet. And when our hands are at our feet, we're gonna tuck the tailbone, roll up the back, thinking about one vertebrae at a time rolling, and then the shoulders will come down and back. Once we're there, we're gonna hinge forward from the hips again, walk the hands out to plank, press it to down dog, raise right leg to ceiling, bring the knee to the chest, step it through. T-spine rotation, right hand reaches to the sky, bring it down to the floor, step back plank, press to down dog. Raising left leg to ceiling this time as right heel reaches for the floor, bring the knee to the chest, step that left leg through the hands, reach left up to ceiling. Bringing it down, stepping back to plank, we're gonna press back to down dog. So this time, we're gonna take our eyes and look at our thumbs and we're gonna step our right foot outside our right hand, our left foot outside our left hand, and bring the hips down for a low squat in the middle. So what this will look like from the side, trying to stay up nice and tall, and we're gonna reach the hands down to the floor. Taking your left hand, reach it up to the ceiling, keeping an eye on that hand, bringing it down. Right hand reaches up, bring that one down, and then both hands will reach up to the ceiling, and we'll stand up nice and tall. From here, we're gonna hinge from the hips, keeping the back nice and flat, spine neutral, walk hands to plank, press it to down dog. Right leg comes up to ceiling, knee comes to chest, step it through. T-spine rotation, reach for the sky. Bring that hand to the floor, step back, press to down dog again. Left leg reaches up this time, then knee to chest, step it through the hands. Left hand reaches the sky for your T-spine on this side. Hand to floor, step back plank, press to down dog. This time walking the hands back to the feet. 
at the back, at the back, tuck the tailbone under, roll up to a stand, roll the shoulders down and back. So we're going to do that again. Hinge, walk to plank, press to down dog, right leg to sky, pull the knee to the chest, step it through the hands, open it up, bring it down to the floor, step back to plank, inhale and press to down dog, inhale reaching left leg up, draw the knee to the chest, step it through the hands, T-spine rotation here. Bring that down to the floor, step it back to plank, press back to down dog again. Really trying to get that mobility through the shoulders. Eyes come to your hands, and this time you can step or hop the feet wide outside the hands to that low squat. Reaching right arm up, eyes on the hand, bring it down, keep the chest up nice and tall, left hand reaches, bring that down, and then reach both hands up to the sky, Keeping core nice and tight, press up. We have one more of those to do. Forward, walk it out, press to down dog, right leg to sky, step it through. Right hand reaches up to the ceiling, bring it down to the floor, step back plank, press to down dog, left leg to sky, pull it through, step it through the hands, reach left hand up to ceiling. Bring it down to the floor and step to plank, then press to down dog. From here, this time, walking the hands back, trying to keep the legs straight if you can. And then we're just going to drop the head down, slight bend in the knees, tuck the tailbone under, and roll up to a standing position. Good, then roll the shoulders back. All right, so getting ready to get into our workout. You're going to get whatever you want to use. The first exercises that we're going to do are a squat for the strength, a squat jump for a plyometric exercise. And then we're going to use the band and we're going to do some prep chest work. So we're going to do some presses with the band just to get warmed up for the next group of exercises that we're going to do. All right, so grabbing onto your kettlebell. And we're going to start off with a front squat, a goblet squat, or you can hold your weight low. So we're going to do five squats, option to hold kettlebell here, or you can hold kettlebell at the chest. If you're holding it at the chest, you're going to get a little bit more core out of it. Core is still braced nice and tight. We're going to do five repetitions, staying within your own range of motion. First thing you're going to do is think about screwing the feet into the floor so that you're creating tension. Come down to the bottom of your squat, up for one, two, three, four, and five. From there, putting the kettlebell down and five squat jumps immediately. So coming down to the bottom of the squat, exploding up, three, two, three, four, five, good. And now we have two minutes rest. In our two minutes rest, we're going to grab onto a band and we're going to do some chest presses. So we're just going to take the brand and we're going to place it underneath the arms. And we're going to start off with chest press with just one hand. So five times holding onto the band, pressing out to full extension of the arm and resist coming back. Two. Trying to keep the arm parallel to the floor if you can. Three, four, and five. So at the top of that movement, try and get a nice good squeeze. From here, other side. So one, nice slow back. Two, three, four, and five. And then we're just gonna take the rest of that rest. So if you want to, if you have water, you can grab a drink of water. Of course, you can always press pause and grab a drink of water too if you want to. So today we're using two minutes of rest between our exercises. Research has shown that 
the best potentiation comes from four minutes of rest between each exercise. So we're gonna get started on our second set of squats and squat jumps. So getting your weight and holding it wherever you're comfortable. Make sure that you're lifting up with proper form here as well. And we're gonna complete five squats first. So creating that tension, bracing the core nice and tight. Ready? Here we go. Coming down to the bottom for one, two. Make sure that you keep a neutral spine. Three, four, and five. Putting that weight down, moving right into our squat jumps, starting from the bottom of that squat and exploding up. One, two, three, four, five. Good. From here, we're gonna grab onto our band and we're going to do chest press five times each side. So starting off, you can adjust the band too, so you can make it easier or harder if you need to. You can make it harder by pulling more so on the side that you're not using, so this is a shorter side. So five presses out, and we're gonna resist coming back in, so we're not just gonna let the band snap together. Two, three, four, and five. Moving to the other side. One, two. Get a good squeeze at the top of that movement right here. Three, four, and five. Okay, so we're putting that band down. We're going to do one more set of this before we move on to our next set of exercises. So we have about 30 seconds left on our, on our rest. If you wanna grab a drink of water, please feel free to go ahead and grab a drink of water. If you want to walk around a little bit, then walk around a little bit. The only thing that you shouldn't really do is try to stretch out the legs as that would actually end up being counterproductive to what we're trying to do today. So we really want to use that um, shortened muscle contraction in order to create explosiveness. So we don't want to stretch out the muscles before we go into our muscular workout. So next set, getting ready. We're going to do five times squats. Create that tension, screw the feet into the floor. Feet can be wherever they're comfortable and you're gonna go within your own range of motion. Starting off right here, here we go. So down for one, squeeze it up. Two, three, four, and last one, bringing it up for five, and then moving into squat jumps again, using that explosiveness and the stretch shortening cycle of the muscle. So down, up for one, Two, jump up as high as you can. Three, four, five. Good. Taking our two minutes again. So this will be the last time we use that activation exercise for the chest. Grabbing onto the band. Placing it underneath the arms, so behind the back. Feet will be shoulder width apart. And we're going to do five repetitions on this side, resisting the pull back. Again, you can make it easier or harder if you need to. That's two, three, four, and five. Good, and we're going to take that over to the other side now. Press for one, two, Nice, slow, resisted coming back. Three. Four. <laughs> and one more time. Five. Good. 
So we're gonna take that band and we're just going to place it off to the side. And we're gonna get ready for our next set of exercises. So our next set of exercises combine bench press and plyometric push-up. So for your bench press, you can do one arm separate from the other, or you can do two hands depending on the weight that you have, your own capabilities, and I, I don't know what else. <laughs> Sorry. So you're just going to stay within your own capabilities. We're going to do five repetitions per hand. I'm going to do five per side because the kettlebell is a little bit awkward to do with two hands at once. As soon as we finish that, we're going to get into a plyometric push-up. So I'll show you what that looks like for your chest press. We're going to lie down on the floor. And you're going to pull the weight in nice and close. So you're going to do five repetitions of a chest press here on each hand. Once we finish that, we're going to move into a plyometric push-up. So your plyometric push-up, we're going to start in a fully extended position, come down, and then you're going to come up as quick as you can. So you're not going to hold down like I just did, but you're going to pop up and down. So we don't want to have any pauses at all. We want to get down to the bottom and then a quick push up as fast as we can. So we're exploding out of that bottom position. Our preparatory exercise is going to be a hamstring mobility. So we're going to use the band to wrap around our foot and just go through a range of motion. So you can do this with a strap or a belt as well. All right, so getting ready, we're gonna start off with those bench presses. So completing five repetitions on each side. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're gonna switch over to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> bringing that down. And then we're going to pop right into that plyometric push up. So coming down, five repetitions of this. One, two, three, four, and five. Good. And then we're going into our two minutes rest. And during our two minutes rest, we're going to use a band and go through some hamstring mobility. So you're going to take your band and we're going to wrap it around the arch of one foot. And you're just going to lay down on your back and you're going to hold the band so that you create some resistance. If it's around your right foot, your left foot is gonna be extended and you're gonna press away through the heel of the left foot. Holding here with the hands, you're just going to squeeze the glute and extend the leg until the heel comes down and touches the floor and then you're going to resist coming back up. So squeezing down for two. Three. four, and we're not moving our hands here with our legs. We want to create that resistance. So you can even anchor it back by the chest if you want to really squeeze the glute as you come to the floor. So that's five on this leg. We're gonna take the band off this foot, move it over to the other. Pressing up to the ceiling, pressing away through the right heel holding that band, getting some resistance on it, squeeze the glute and bring the heel down to tap the floor, resist it coming up. So four more times as you come up, you might feel a little bit of a stretch in the hamstring at the back. And if you can keep your knees straight, then you're going to keep your knees straight throughout this. If there's a slight bend in your knee though, that's okay too. 
Two more. And one more time. Good. And then we're just going to gently take the band off this foot and set it to the side. Again, if you want to grab a quick drink of water between sets, you can. So we're only going to do two sets of this exercise so that we can hopefully get through all of the different exercises that we have to do. So getting ready to start your second set. So we have five times chest press. You can either do singles or you can do a double chest press again. That is up to you. So starting off with single arm for me. When you bring your arm down, you want your arm to come down at a 45 degree angle. So you wanna make sure that your arm isn't out to the side at a 90 degree. It's just a little bit safer for the shoulder. From here, we're gonna take it over to the other side for five repetitions there. And you're gonna breathe out as you extend the arm up to the ceiling and you'll breathe in as the arm comes down towards the floor. So two more on this side. And last press, bringing that down, moving right into our push-up plyo. So flipping over onto your front, getting in a nice alignment, coming down, up nice and quick. Two, three, four, five. Good. If you are having a hard time keeping your core nice and tight, you could always drop the knees to the floor if you need to on your push-ups as well. So one more time, we're gonna go through that hamstring mobility before we move on to our next group of exercises. So laying flat on the back again, wrapping the band or the belt or strap around your foot, holding on to it, trying not to move with it, Press the foot, the heel up to the ceiling. Other heel presses away and bring the foot down, initiating with that glute squeeze. And then a little bit of resistance as you come back up to the top of that movement. Squeeze the glute as you come down. A little bit of a hamstring stretch on the way up. We're gonna to start to work your breath with this. So get a nice deep breath in as the leg comes up. And as you exhale, breathing out. And I think we have one more on this leg. And then we'll move over to the other leg. So gently taking the band off of the foot, place it around the arch of the other foot, pressing the heel away, pressing right heel away as well so the leg that's on the floor and then try to straighten the knee if you can, but without locking it out. Squeeze the glute, heel comes down to the floor for one, two, resist coming up, don't come up super quick. Three, pushing away through the heel all the time. And remember you're really squeezing the glute as you bring the leg down to the floor and working with breath. A nice breath in as the leg raises. Last time, exhaling it down and inhaling as the knee comes up to the ceiling. Releasing the band nice and easy, taking the band off of the foot once more. So moving into our next set of exercises, which will be a hip press, and then we're gonna counter that with a kettlebell swing. When we're doing our kettlebell swing, we're going to actually increase the number of repetitions that we're doing to 10. And for our hip press, we're still gonna stay at five. When we're doing our hip press, I'll just give you a demonstration of what the exercise is going to be. We're gonna start off by lying down on our backs. Nice and flat. We're gonna take the weight and we're gonna place it at our hips. Knees are gonna be bent 90 degrees. We're gonna brace the core, and then we're gonna squeeze the glutes, and we're gonna press the hip up to the ceiling. So really squeezing at the top of this movement. 
And we're also gonna pull our thighs together so that the knees don't just open up to the outsides. And then we're gonna come down, tap to the floor, and press up for our second repetition. So as I said earlier, we're going to do five of those. Your kettlebell swing, regardless of if you're using a kettlebell or if you're using a backpack with weight or something else, is going to be a hinge as well. So just like we did in that warm up where we had a flat back hinge, it's the same thing with our kettlebell. You'll have a slight bend in the knee, but we really want to make sure that we're targeting the hamstrings with this swing. So we're not gonna come into a squat to do our swing. We're going to do it with a hinge. So we're gonna set the kettlebell up so it's in front of us and our feet create a triangle with the kettlebell. So the feet would be the base of the triangle, kettlebell is the point. From here, we're gonna hinge forward from the hips. Notice I have just a slight bend in my knee. My back stays neutral as I reach for the kettlebell. So regardless, as I said, if it's a kettlebell or something else, you're going to take the kettlebell or whatever weight you're using, pull it between the legs, and then explode up out of that movement. So all of the power in this movement comes from the hips. We're gonna press the hips back between each repetition. Back stays neutral, core tight. And at the top of the movement, when the kettlebell comes to the chest, the knees and the hips are extended and straight without being locked out. And our exercise in between that is going to be for lats. So we're going to use the band again, and this time, we're just going to take the band overhead, kind of like the W's that we did in the warm up, except we'll do one side at a time where we pull the elbow down and then resist coming up. So band can be doubled or single. That's up to you. So we're gonna start with our five repetitions of hip press, 10 repetitions kettlebell swing, and then we'll get into our lat warm up. Good, so taking your weight, placing it on your hip, bending the knees 90 degrees, squeezing the glutes, bracing the core, inhale and as you exhale, press up to the top of that press, pulling the thighs together, coming back down so that the hips touch to the floor, exhale and squeeze, inhale on the way down, exhale, squeeze it up, and at the top, you wanna to get a really good squeeze. Two more repetitions. The last one squeezes up. And then we'll come down, placing the kettlebell down on the floor and getting ready to do those swings. So doing 10 repetitions of swings. And always remember, feel free to modify the repetitions and what you're doing according to how you're feeling. Back stays neutral, slight bend in the knee, pull back and up for one, two, core is tight, straightening knees and hips at the top of the movement, five, six, head stays in line with spine, eight, nine, ten, good. Putting down that weight nice and easy, this time you can use a squat. And we're gonna grab onto the band and we're gonna start prepping lats for the next set of exercises. So either doubling the band or single, bringing that up overhead, one arm holds steady, the other one is going to pull down, leading with the elbow, resist coming up for five repetitions. So one, again, we wanna get that breath and breathing rate back to normal. Two, so we're gonna inhale, exhale, squeeze it down, for three, really initiating the lats on the sides of the back. Exhaling down for four. One more time, pulling it down and back with the elbow and back up for five. Moving over to the other side, inhale here. Exhale, draw the elbow down towards the floor and slightly back really trying to squeeze the lats and concentrate on what you're trying to work for one. Resist it coming up for two, 
three, two more times on this side. Try not to shrug the, sh the shoulders up to the ears. Try and keep the shoulders down. Pull through that arm, lead with the elbow. One more time on this side, pulling away and down. Good, and that's it for this side. We have about 30 seconds before we start our next set. So again, if you wanna grab a drink, you can grab a drink. Or you can just take your rest. So when you're doing your kettlebell press, your hip press, we also wanna make sure that we don't overextend our hips. So being careful that our hips aren't actually going beyond parallel with our knees when we're in the extended position. Again, you're gonna make sure that you keep your core nice and tight throughout. So getting ready for that second set, bringing that weight up onto the hips, bending the knees, inhale here, and as you exhale, squeezing up to the ceiling, thighs squeeze together, glute really squeezes as hard as you can, bringing that back down for one, squeezing up again, bring that back down, that's two, Squeeze up, down for three. Again, you should be able to kind of feel the vertebrae as they're coming down to the floor. Squeezing up, bringing it down for four. And one more repetition of this. Last time, squeeze up. Maybe we'll get a nice good little hold here and then bringing it back down to the floor. Placing the weight down, getting ready to move into our kettlebell swings. Standing up, again, creating that triangle, your feet the base, the kettlebell, the tip of the triangle, hinging from the hip, keeping a neutral spine. We wanna keep our head in line with our spine, slight bend in the knee, get an inhale. Think about trying to bend the kettlebell handle in half, pull back up for one, two, three, four. Really initiate the squeeze from the hamstrings and the glutes. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. Letting that kettlebell swing down, squat it down to the floor, grabbing onto your band again, and we'll do those lat pulls. So band is either singled or doubled, held above head, pulling the elbow down and back. So hand comes away from the elbow, the body, sorry, as the elbow comes down and back towards it. Two, resisting, coming up, getting control of the breath, inhale, exhale as you squeeze it down, inhale brings it up, exhale down, inhale up, one more repetition on this side, so last time exhaling down. Inhale to rise it up. Maybe give it a little bit of a rest for the shoulders. Nice deep breath in and out. And then raising up overhead, moving to the other side. So inhale here, shoulders are drawn down and back. Exhale, squeeze the elbow down and back. Inhale, rises it up overhead. Exhale, draws it away. So that's two, three more on this side. Remember not to shrug the shoulders up, keep them down, pull that elbow down and back. That's three, two more. Get that nice big inhale for repetition four. Last time, number five. Good, and releasing that down. Our last two exercises are going to be pull-ups partnered with a push press. So for your pull-ups, there's a few different options that you can use if you don't have a pull-up bar. So if you have a pull-up bar, then we're going to do your pull-ups. And for your pull-ups, your palms are going to face away. And we're gonna start in a hang position. From there, you're gonna pull up, if you can, till your chin is over the bar. If your ceiling is like mine, then you won't be able to and come to full extension at the bottom. 
So that's option number one. If you have the capability to do pull-ups, then we'll do that. Option number two, if you have the ability to do an inverted row by using some piece of equipment that you have in your house, then you can do an inverted row. So for an inverted row, you're going to lie underneath a stick or a bar, press the hips up to the ceiling, and then you're gonna pull your chest up towards that bar and come back down to a full extension, keeping a neutral spine throughout. The more that you straighten your legs, the harder you're going to make that one. So your second option is inverted row. If you don't have the ability to do that, then you can always do a bent over row. And for a bent over row, you can use whatever weight that you've been using. And you have the option of doing either a single bent over row or a double arm bent over row, depending on what you had. So for your single arm, we're gonna hinge forward from the hips and we're gonna stagger the feet. You're gonna grasp onto the kettlebell, keeping a neutral spine. And then we're gonna square up the shoulders. From here, you're gonna draw the elbow up and back and then you're going to come back down to the floor. When you do that, make sure that you're not dipping the shoulder down. So we wanna stay nice, square, neutral. Pull up and come down under control. So that's your option for your single arm. If you're doing single arm, then you're going to do five repetitions each side. If you're going to do a double, a double arm, bent over row, then you're gonna hold on to your weight. Same thing, you're gonna keep that neutral spine, except we're gonna pull up here squeezing the shoulder blades together behind the back. So we want to try and keep your head in line with your spine, not looking up like I'm doing. So you can do that and you can do five repetitions of that. The choice is yours. And then we're going to follow that with a push press overhead. So a push press uses a little bit of a squat and then you press it up overhead explosively. So with the kettlebell or whatever weight you have, you're gonna start by holding it at shoulder height. You can add a little dip, and then you're gonna explode out of the dip, so you're going to extend ankles, knees, hips, and arms are gonna float up overhead. So down here, arms up overhead to full extension, and then pull it back down. Do it again, dip, press it up. So we're gonna do five repetitions of that, and then we're going to have your two minutes rest, and on your two minutes rest, even though we won't have a next group of exercise, we're gonna work something that kind of needs to be worked all the time and we overlook quite a bit. And that's gonna be our glute med. So we'll do that with side lying raises, leg raises, and we'll do that all together. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started with your pull-ups, your inverted row or your bent over row, completing five repetitions of each. So one, two, three, four, and five. So good, from there, moving into your push press. So grasping onto the weight, holding it here. We're gonna do that slight dip and the press overhead five times. So dip down, up like you're gonna jump, press for one, fully extending the arms at the top, but keeping the spine in line. So making sure that you're not pressing out through the chest. Two more times. That was four, and this is five. Good, putting the weight down. And on our two minutes rest, we're going to go into side leg raises. So for side leg raise, we're just gonna lie down on our mat. You're gonna extend your top leg out. And your bottom leg can be straight just to give you some balance. The top leg, you're gonna to turn the toe down towards the mat. Hand can be in front for balance as well, and you can rest your arm on your, I'm sorry, your head on your arm if you want to. Then we're gonna do leg raises. And we're gonna do 10 times this side. When we're raising the leg up, it's only a little lift, it doesn't have to be a large lift. And we wanna feel that in the medial glute of that top leg. So that's four, five, Remember, we wanna keep the toe down towards the floor. Six, seven, eight, and keep pressing away through the heel for nine and 10. We're just gonna roll over to the other side and complete 10 on that side. So getting yourself set up, resting your head in your arm or on your hand. 
Bottom leg can be straight bent so that you have some balance. Top leg is straight, toe angle down toward the floor. Press away through that top heel and keep it in line with the body. Small lift for one, two, three. Really press through the heel and keep the toe turned down towards the floor. Four, five, six. Wanting to feel it in that top hip. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then just releasing that leg down to the floor and let it relax. Again, if you wanna grab a quick drink before we go into our last set of exercises for today, please feel free to do so. You have about 15 seconds. All right, are we ready? Let's finish up that last set. So your inverted row, your pull-ups, or your bent over row. Ready and let's begin. One, two, three, four, and five. Getting ready for that last set of push press. Grabbing onto your weight, bringing it to shoulder height. Feet are be about hip width apart. Coming down to that little dip. Getting ready as if you're gonna explode into a jump. Overhead for one, down, two, down, three, down, four, last one, five. Good, releasing that to the floor. And we'll do one more set for our glute med. So coming down, laying onto the floor. Bending bottom leg. Angle that toe down to the floor, targeting glute med. Little leg raise, so not too high for one. Press through that heel. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, good. Moving over to the other side. Angling that toe down again, press through the top heel, raising up for one, two, three. Don't let the foot come parallel to the floor. Four, five, Squeeze through the heel, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, releasing that one down. So that is it for our workout today. We'll go through a couple of different stretches before we go our separate ways and say goodbye. So let's start off by just coming into a seated position. And we're just gonna bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees just open up to the outside. And you can grasp onto your feet if you want to. And we're gonna inhale, nice full breath, so really expanding out the lungs and the belly. And as you exhale, if you can, you're gonna move forward from the hip, keeping a nice flat back and just get a little bit of a lean into that. So getting a stretch for the inner thighs. So on this, again, like I said, trying to keep a nice neutral spine so we don't want to bend and flex into that. We just want to sit up nice and tall. And we're just going to take a few breaths here. So about three of my breaths. We'll inhale here. And as you inhale, I just want you to feel the belly fill up with air to the front and the sides. And then to have a nice slow exhale out through the mouth. Two more breaths in and out. And last time, breathing in and out. 
From here, we're just gonna take one leg out straight, take the other leg, cross it over that knee. Option to keep this leg straight, or if you want to, you can take it to a tuck underneath. You're gonna take, if you have your right knee crossed over, your left arm is gonna come and you're gonna have a little bit of a knee hug. As you hug the knee, you're just going to inhale so we have a nice tall spine and we're not slouching down. So inhale nice and tall. And as you exhale, you're gonna look over that right shoulder towards the back of the room. So in this, we're getting a stretch for the outer hip. And we want both of our sit bones to be down on the mat. Maybe inhale nice tall spine again. And if you can, we'll exhale further into that. And we're gonna take that right hand and we're just going to flip it around so the palm's facing the back and bring the back of the hand reaching towards opposite hip. And then we're gonna try to press the back of that hand into the hip, opening up the shoulder on the right side. Gaze falls over that right shoulder. Spine stays nice and tall and both hip bones should be in contact with the mat. So try not to lean away from that leg. Try to sit the hip bone down and keep hugging that knee, pressing the back of the hand into the back. And we'll take one more inhale here. And as you exhale, just release the hand off of the back. Gaze comes to the front and chest will follow. So we're gonna untwist the legs if you had them twisted and we're gonna take it to the other side. So we can start with one leg straight, taking the left leg this time, placing it over the right. Again, that right leg can stay extended if you like, or you can slide it back and tuck it under. Both feet will stay in contact with the floor, grasping on, hugging the knee in with the right hand. Inhale, nice and tall spine. As you exhale, bringing it into a twist, looking over that back shoulder, and just take some time to feel whether or not your hips are raising up off of the floor or if they're both touching down to the mat. Taking another nice inhale here. As you exhale, you're gonna take that left hand, reach it behind the back, so the back of the hand is reaching for the opposite hip, and then press the back of the hand in towards the hip, opening up that left shoulder, so you're drawing shoulder blades together behind. Keep hugging the knee in, remembering to keep a nice, tall, neutral spine, feeling the stretch in the outer hip. Again, both hip bones are down to the mat and keep pressing the back of the hand into the back so that you're opening up and stretching out that front shoulder. And one more nice big inhale as you exhale, releasing the hand from the back, gaze comes forward and the chest rotates forward with that. From here, we're just gonna take our legs and we're gonna cross them. So feel free to cross them whichever way feels comfortable. And then we're just going to sit tall, nice and center. Hands are gonna come out to either side. Inhale for a nice tall spine and a little bit of a chin tuck in as you exhale. Next inhale, you're just gonna draw the right arm up to the ceiling, so reach for the ceiling. We're gonna stretch out the lats. And as you exhale, we're just going to reach over to the opposite side, so reach through the fingertips, feeling the stretch down the side. Chin can be tucked into the chest, and you can walk that left hand out a little bit further if you wanna move further into that stretch. Make sure you're not dumping everything into that left arm, though and keep reaching through the fingertips of the right hand that's reaching overhead. Again, concentrating on nice, even breaths in and out, just bringing that heart rate back down. Last breath in. As you exhale, just let the arm kind of fall down and through, bringing it up to a seated position. Placing the hand out to the side, inhale, left hand up this time. As you exhale, you can walk the right hand fingers away and reach overhead. Again, we wanna make sure that both of our sit bones are down on the mat, and we don't wanna just dump everything into this side, so you can try to reach out a little bit if you want to. 
feeling the stretch down through the lats that we just worked. Chin can stay tucked in. Reach through the fingertips. And we'll draw a couple more breaths in here. Last breath in. And as you exhale, just let the arm come down. Bring it back over to the side, sitting up nice and tall. And then we're just gonna inhale, raise the shoulders up towards the ears. As you exhale, draw the shoulder blades down and back and pull the shoulders down. Inhale, shoulders will come forward and up. Exhale, shoulders come down and back. Two more times like that. So let's just move with our breath. Inhale, forward, up. Exhale, draw shoulder blades together. Shoulders pull down the back. One more time. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, bring the shoulders down. Shoulder blades draw down the back. And then one more inhale as we reach both hands up overhead and really stretch it up to the ceiling. And exhale, hands just come down. Thanks for joining me for Power Hour today. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me. I hope that you guys have a great Friday and a great weekend. Thanks again.